Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. We got another great collaboration tutorial between Alessandro Boncio and myself. He came up with this really, really fun technique to take splines and then add soft body dynamics to them and have this really nice organic animation. So I'm gonna walk you through it right now. All right, so we have this setup right here and we have a pegboard with pegs and I actually have another plane that's hidden and it's on the front of the pegs and it has a dynamics tag on it. And that's just to keep the ropes from falling or sliding off the pegs in the front. All right, so let's make the spline here. Under your spline tools, there's one called sketch, which is really fun to use. You can change the stroke smoothing and maybe 65% would be a good place to start. And the nice thing about sketch is you can just click and drag and draw a spline. So it's really, really fun to use. So we'll just create a new spline. We'll just loop around these pegs a few times. And then just make sure that at the end, you have a nice tail of spline coming out of it, which we'll use later. All right, so we got our spline. Let's change the interpolation. Let's change it to a B spline. And let's change the points to uniform. And you probably want to take the number of points down a little bit, maybe to four or five. All right, now let's right click on that spline and add a soft body dynamics tag under the simulation tags. And this is one thing that we wanted to make sure you're aware of that you can add a soft body tag onto a spline and it reacts really well to the dynamic uh, engine in Cinema 4D. All right, so let's make some tweaks to that tag. Let's make the bounce zero and let's add a bunch of friction, maybe 200%. And then let's go to the soft body tab and tweak some things here, mainly the structure under springs. We wanna kick that way up. So maybe 1500 or 2000, just so that uh, we retain the structure of that spline. All right, so that's about all that we need to tweak and we'll just see what this looks like here. So we got this really nice dynamic uh, simulation here that's very organic. And now let's go ahead and make some tweaks to the settings here. So one thing I did want to mention is you can see that it's not resting on the pegs completely. That's because in the cloner on that dynamics tag, we went into the margin and we changed that to one centimeter so that the spline is pushing away one centimeter from the pegs. And that's because when we add a sweep nerves, uh, it's gonna be one centimeter thick and that way we won't have it intersecting into that peg. So that's the nice way to use the margin option in your tag just to push the splines away from that object a little bit. So one thing we can do is make a more accurate uh, render here by going to control D and then going to the uh, dynamics tab and then the expert tab and you can increase the quality of your uh, dynamic simulations uh, steps per frame especially if you kick that up it'll give you a much more accurate dynamic simulation it's gonna uh, render a little bit slower but it's definitely worth it all right a couple other things that we can do right now is to add an attractor and if we add an attractor it's gonna be able to pin whatever points of that spline we want not to move. So let's say that we want the end of our spline not to move at all. Uh, we can actually just put that attractor right on that point and we can add a fall off. We'll add a spherical fall off into that attractor and whatever part of the spline is inside of that attractor is going to uh, be stuck, it's not gonna move. And make sure you kick up the power of that attractor a little bit. Then we'll duplicate it and we'll put it on the other end and now these two ends of our splines are gonna be held in place while the rest of the spline does its dynamic simulation. So this is a really nice way to sort of dial in exactly what parts of your spline are doing what. So you can see that it's definitely slowing down the render speed and getting a little janky. If you go to your spline, you can change the number of points. If you lower those a little bit, it should clear up some of those issues. Uh, one last thing is that if you zoom in right here, you can see that we have some intersections. It's gonna get worse once we add a sweep. So we're gonna want to address this. You can do that by going to the beginning of your animation and we're gonna go into point mode on that spline and you can just grab the points that are intersecting, highlight them, and then just move them forward a little bit, just anywhere so that they're not intersecting. So grab the ones that are intersecting and just push and pull them a little bit. And if you do that and then you rerun the simulation, it's gonna look a lot better. And uh, now you can see that there are no overlaps and everything is looking really good. Now you have your really nice ropes. We're just gonna put this in a sweep. We'll add a end side and we'll change the radius to one centimeter like we had mentioned before with that margin. And we'll change the size to 12 and tick on rounding. And from there we'll add a sweep nerves and then we'll drag that end side into the sweep as well. And now we have our really nice rope simulation. If we go ahead and play through it, you can see that it's very, very nice and organic. And it's a great way to stage ropes or position them in your scene however you want them. Hope you guys found that useful and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.